Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Nick, and I want to welcome you to Zero to Infinity, which is a show dedicated to uncovering how great, successful businesses uh, are created and thriving, and also to inspire those looking to start or create their own business and bring theirs to the next level. And today we're going to uncover the lessons, the takeaways, and the turning points that got our guests to where they are today and how they're making it happen. And so today, with that, we have Cynthia Harkness, and she is the owner of Fearless Fly Fishing. And a little breakdown of a little backstory here is that after she left a career in Wall Street as a trader, she decided to close the door on her financial career and start a fly fishing business. Yeah, that's right. You read that right. You heard that right. And in just a little over two years, she has become a highly sought after fly fishing guy in the Northeast with events happening up and down the Eastern Seaboard, the Midwest, and even in Canada. How's it going, Cynthia? Hi, Nick. It's going great. Just no, having... are you... Yeah. Just... Sorry, I interrupted there. Go for it. No, I'm having a great time. I'm uh, sitting in my backyard enjoying a, a beautiful night and uh, ending a day of fun fishing. <laughs> yeah, so we pulled this together last minute and I'm super happy that you were able to do this. And uh, for anyone that's watching this, uh, you know, you have a wicked busy schedule coming up and we basically said, there's not a lot in your schedule, not a lot of free days. Let's just come in here and let's do this. Let's just jump in here and have this conversation. Right. Right. That you started telling your story, which we'll get into in a second. It was just, uh, you know, really intriguing, inspiring, and just, uh, yeah. So let's just dive in where you came from and the background a little bit about being a Wall Street trader, and then what happened. How did you create? This well, fish? I mean, I love, I love being a Wall Street trader. It's um, there are a lot of parallels between. <laughs> you know, uh, pulling the trigger on uh, lows and highs and keep keep going on that last cast for that big fish. Um, so there's some parallels. What's not a parallel is the monies that you make, which is why right after college, I went to a career on Wall Street. Uh, just followed the, the path, you know, and it was great. And I did that for like 25, I can't even believe I'm saying this, it feels like yesterday, but it was 25 very fun years. Um, and then, you know, the things happen, marriage, family, two beautiful boys, my husband, it all worked out as mm -hmm. a couple of hiccups that, you know, we all remember some of those not so friendly times like 9-11. So I had a turning point at 9-11 and I said, you know what? I did it. I'm done. Let me enjoy two beautiful kids, the big the big house, <laughs> garden, all that. And uh, I just stayed at home for about three years. And then I got crazy. And I decided I need to not just be an at-home mom with two beautiful boys, but let me try to, I don't know, broaden what I'm doing out here in the suburbs. Because I lived in the city. You know, when you work on Wall Street, you have to live in the city. Because you're on the desk at 7 a.m., and the day might end when the market are there. Yep, there you are. You repeat that uh, your day doesn't end. So uh, I said when uh, when you work on Wall Street, your day starts at 7 a.m. And mm -hmm. it ends at 4, but it doesn't really end. It ends after you, your get-togethers and, and the shows and all this like wonderful entertaining that goes on where you try to build those relationships so you can make that gentleman's handshake so you, you know, you firm up the deal for the next day. Mm -hmm. All of that happened. And when I made that switch from Wall Street into being a mom, it was pretty radical. And that's when I, about three years into it, I said, I need to... I need to find something else. I need to keep that sort of energy, interacting with people, being challenged. I need to keep that going. And I found my way quite, you know, um, kind of like a funny way. I found my way over to Orvis. And next thing you know, I was working at Orvis, which is a retail store that specializes in some really great high-end outdoor clothing and people know it for fly fishing. I never picked up a rod until I started working for Orvis, which was a retail job in the suburbs because I moved from being in downtown Boston so you can accommodate those crazy hours of being on Wall Street into the suburbs. And as soon as I got into 
the suburbs, like I said, I needed that next step. Um, and I started working that crazy retail job. And I just kept pushing the envelope. I started looking through the catalogs and I saw these beautiful pictures of rivers and mountains and streams and oceans with people holding fish. Those people were usually wearing red flannel shirts with beards. <laughs> they weren't moms from Canton. And uh, I don't know, it sort of intrigued me. I've always been engaged with the outdoors. I've always wanted to be an outdoors person. And what, what was that moment? What What was the moment that hit you that you said, yeah. let's do this? Yeah, the moment that hit me was on my first time I hired a guide who took me to Western Mass and she put me in waders and I stood in the river and I felt the way my body just got sucked in by these, by the rushing waters of the river all around me. And I realized you can stand in a river. <laughs> Never known that before. And I said, wow. And that wasn't even the fun part. The fun part was you can cast a fly rod and you can catch a trout and you can hold it. I don't get a chance to hold a lot of living things prior to that point. So holding this living trout and then sort of releasing it and watching it swim away, that was my moment. And I said, I, I really want to do this. I, I really want to own this. I really want to, um, I really want to learn more about this because it was just beyond exciting. Did you know at that moment that it was going to be a business for yourself? Or did Absolutely. you know? No. Nick, good question, Nick. No, I had no idea. Um, I just knew this was something I wanted to learn more about. So I started watching videos and, and reading books, you know, because nobody told me that you could fly fish for anything and everything that swims. I thought you could only pick up a fly rod and fish for trout. That was what I thought. And you mentioned striped bass. And I was like, really? You can you can do striped bass. That's well, my world. That's <laughs> okay. right. So I okay. it started snowballing. You know, I, I just started peeling the layers off. I just started peeling through the layers. And so just, really, you suddenly became, you, you found a passion for it and you dove right in. And yeah. Yeah. So then I, uh, you know, upgraded myself. Uh, you know, I, I hate when I keep doing this, but I started climbing the ladder. And the next thing you know, I'm the fishing manager at Orvis. Uh -huh. And I did that for five years. Um, and then there was, a, there was five years that went during that time. You went fishing for the first time, working at Orvis. And then, OK, there's still, still OK. Still at Orvis. And uh, and it was great. Met amazing people, you yeah. know. The angling uh, fly fishing community I discovered was just a, people who were like me, looking to get out in the outdoors, but in a lot of ways like you, Nick, that they, when I said, you know, you can fish, fly fish for striped bass, they're like, no, really? I thought it was just trout. <laughs> um, yep. it's, it's a whole learning curve. And if you don't, if, and it can be a whole learning curve. It can also be, I just want to have a crystal picture with my son you know it mm -hmm. doesn't be all of that it can be a little bit of that so and then um, you, you translated this into a thriving business what were some of the what was the first step you took to to go from mm -hmm. just doing it a passion a hobby into i want to make this money making some sort of well, venture the word that you just said there was the, the number one thing was i kind of embraced the fact that I, it was a passion that I will wake up at, at 4 a.m., not even waking up, because maybe sometimes I can't even sleep because I'm so excited about being able to stand in a river, stand on a boat, you know, walk in an ocean um, and manipulate a tiny little fly line to catch a, 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 a fish or maybe just to be in that environment that maybe catches that fish. So I had the passion. And as soon as I discovered I had that passion, that's when I said, I want to just not only try to live by having my passions, but I also wanted to, I think I said it to you earlier, I kind of wanted to be a president. I was like, you know what? Maybe it's time that I run my own show. I decide my hours. I decide what are my, how much am I going to market? 
I decide my criteria for teaching. I decide where I'm going to go. What's my next 12 months going to look like? I want to be the owner of my own show. Mm-hmm. And that's what um, I decided to do. And so I sat down alone by myself. With I sat down with my IT department and my marketing department and my PR department. It was all me, right? And I, I put it on paper and I, I changed it and I put it on paper. And every time I opened up that piece of paper, I would rewrite it all over again. Mm-hmm. And my business in January of 2019. And I left Orbis. Um, I gave myself those three months to sort of, you know, shake out the sheets, put it on paper, explain to people what I'm doing, explain it again. And there were two words that really meant a lot to me that first year, and it was networking and platforming. And I said, here I had to network the heck out of everything and everyone. And I had to platform myself, put myself in front of people like you um, and businesses and and clients and Wegmans and, and Girl Scouts and everyone, anybody that was maybe looking to be involved with the outdoors and let them know that I was a resource. What was the what was the first iteration of the business model? Was it to teach people fishing? Was it to take them on excursion to teach? Yes, the first iteration was to teach. Within a couple of months, I began to embrace the fact that it wasn't just teaching. Because teaching has, you can teach for free and you can teach to get paid. Mm-hmm. And realized I was out there to get paid, but I was also out there to teach. So I, I came up with this pie that um, I'm still pretty much committed to now, which is 40% of my business is involved in guiding, 40% is involved in hosted travel, and 20% is involved in volunteer work. And I am in year three still fitting into that model. And, and that's a good balance. Absolutely. That's a great way to, so you're plotting this out as you go and always reviewing that. Mm-hmm. And what were yeah. your customers? I'm sorry, what was that, Nick? What were some of your first customers and can you describe how you found them? Yeah, my first customers were my friends, uh, friends, mm-hmm. which is always kind of, because you don't want to charge friends. So I did, I remember writing up, uh, a certificate and I gave it to my closest friend who wanted to hire me right away. And I, I gave her a lifetime certificate for free guiding lessons. <laughs> and, you know, she is one of my best, I, I, I'm embarrassed to call her a client, but she's with me all the time. Any trip I take, she's right there. She's my best PR. She just, and do I ever charge her for guiding? Nope. Do I? Or, you know, I give her a, like 150% of my time, my smile, my, yeah, she's just a friend, you know, somebody that believed in me from the very beginning that constantly said, wow, you know, you've changed. I never would have been able to do this if you didn't tell me I could. And that's probably something that if you hang with me, you'll hear me telling you that over and over. All like right. if I, you can do this. Yeah. And, and we're, at this time when you first started you know working with your friends and things like that did you have any sense or any kind of uh, hesitation that you had made the right choice or did you know right off the bat that this was going to work this was going to become what it is today and uh, i mean at that point? i mean i hope it's not what it is today because today i wanted to be bigger so <laughs> yeah. yeah but um i had some skills that i i feel comfortable with my technology skills that i was able to engage with um, constant contact, and I'll give them that throw because, man, are they good. They have a terrific website for um, managing subscribers. I remember building out my website, which, please, everybody go to my website and check it out. But I remember building it out and people saying, fearlessflyfishing.com. Fearless. You know, I, so I have a web. Yeah, www.fearlessflyfishing.com. And I have an Instagram and a Facebook. And I remember spending a lot of that prep time building I built my website, my social media account, Facebook, and every a lot of people came to me in the beginning saying, who built your website? I'm like, oh, I, I worked with a team in New York City. They're like, that's great. It was me. 
<laughs> you know, the tools are really easy. You can, if you want your own business, come up with your plan and get out there and start reading the information on GoDaddy, on Constant Contact, on web building. You can do it yourself. You can it's certainly yourself. have the, yeah, yeah, you really can. I mean, yeah. so anyhow, I, I started doing that and um, so, you know, put little links in and, and people started reaching out to me. So you, you had this website and you started working organic social media and started just mm -hmm. putting yourself out there. And mm -hmm. at the same time on your website, you started building up an email list, right? And you're starting to that, keep in contact with them. Is that how it was? On a monthly basis. A lot of pictures of fish, a lot of pictures of me holding fish and losing fish and, you know, just staying true to my, just staying true to my you know, what do they call that? That leading statement that, you know, your vision, my vision statement, the vision board. My vision board is before it used to be, yeah. I want to catch fish. Then it was, I want to help you catch bigger fish. Then it was, I just want to be in the outdoors. <laughs> yeah. it, it sort of starts big and it goes down and it goes big. Um, and it was really good. And learning, I think I've said this to you, Nick, it's, mm -hmm. A lot of it is learning the rules. You can't break the rules till you learn the rules. So I spent a lot of time appreciating the fact that I still today do not know all the rules, never going to know all the rules in fly fishing. But the rule about being a good businesswoman is you work hard. You are loyal to your client base. Uh, you, you need to be the expert. You need to learn. I, everybody who sees me cast, they say, oh, you're a great caster. Oh, you can cast. Every night I watch a video, Introduction to Fly Casting, and I just constantly watch it. You still watch that? Absolutely. Every day. Interesting. You send 10 people, give me 10 anglers in front of me right now, and ask all 10 of them, how do you teach fly casting? Each one has a different approach. And... Like something as simple as A-OK, -okay, right? A-OK. -okay. Mm -hmm. that, that was a, I used to always hold my line, my other hand, when you, they call it shooting line. So when you get a line that really wants to like push 70 feet across the water. And I used to hold it. And this guy the other night watching the video said, it's an A-OK. -okay. And he lets the right line run through his finger versus running through just his hand. That change, that gave me an extra two feet. It's great. <laughs> so That's you good. can, yeah, you, you know, um, you, I, Interesting. I'm, I'm incredibly humble about how much more, even though I've been doing this now for 12, 13 years, five years successfully, mm -hmm. uh, I'm constantly, um, constantly challenging myself. Yeah. Yeah, very good. And so what are some of the, the levers you push and pull to find more customers, to grow your business? Or ha what have you found that works? I partner, like this weekend, tomorrow, I'm hosting a two-day fly fishing retreat for ladies only out in Western Mass. And the only reason why I can do this is I wrote a proposal to the fly shop manager saying, hey, this is a great partnership. I will bring my talent as an educator and here's the agenda I wrote the whole thing up i said i need you 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 have that physical space you have that it's kind of like one it's like if i was a dress designer i could just run it out of my house but i don't want to run dresses out of my house i want to run it in macy's i want to run it at talbot's so i made that proposal to them and they accepted it now it's sold out and now we have one in, in this weekend. We have another one in July. We're doing another one in September. So, And that was something you seeked out? That was something that you... you yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally seeked Yep, yep. I saw there was nobody else reaching out to create an introduction to fly fishing for ladies. And I said, where's the most practical place to do it? And let me do all the work. So it's minimal work. Um, now the owner, they get a great, they get exposure. They get, you know, everybody that people are going to buy their flies. People might buy their fly rod. 
you know, they can offer a 10% disc, you know, there's all kinds of things. And they should get that because my gosh, you know, they have that physical house. I don't have a physical house. My physical house is my backyard. But by partnering with another retail establishment that can recognize me as a resource that can edu- provide a two day fly fishing retreat, that works. So it's being creative. Got to be creative. Then you got to you got to do the work. Mm-hmm. You have to look at a blank sheet of paper and type in your name, the address, what you want to do, why you can do it, <laughs> mm-hmm. when you will do it, and you know what are the benefits, what are the needs and the benefits. Yeah, still right. all <laughs> at the end of the day, it all goes back. Right. It's it makes a lot of sense, right? And there's yeah. A lot of people we talk with, there are people at different stages of their business. Sometimes it's just an idea. Sometimes it's beyond an idea. And there's a lot of people sort of hesitant to start their own thing. They feel safe and secure in their careers, perhaps, but they dream of bigger, greener pastures. Right. And, you know, can we go into that a little bit? And then I want to dive into sort of your mantras that you and I talked about, those four main pillars that you mentioned, but what kind of insights can you give to someone that may be at the stage where they're thinking about a business or they're thinking about, um, you know, being their own boss like you did? Mm-hmm. What sort of things, <laughs> looking back, what would you tell yourself at their stage if you were there again? If you're not, if you're married, make sure your husband has no idea what you're thinking of doing. That would be the- <laughs> No, um, <laughs> I, mean, I, <laughs> I think the first thing is you, you really have to have some sort of passion for it. Yeah. Um, it's very comfortable to go to work and and open up a locker and go to a register and and people just walk in because there's another whole environment created. Um, but you have to be able to live with yourself. And there's a lot of days I'm just sitting uh, for five hours in my kitchen on a laptop and I'm creating, you know, income and expenses. I'm, I'm cold calling lodges trying to introduce myself. I'm you know, trying to remember who are my clients. Um, I'm mapping out what the next 12 months is. So it's, it's not all fun and game. It's not all fun and game. So you have to get ready to live with yourself. There's no interaction. You're alone until you get out there in the water with one or two clients. Um, and then, you know, you have that customer interaction. So social media actually <laughs> keeps me in contact with a lot of a lot of it because you it, there's a really tight community in fly fishing that sort of engages in that but if you don't have that and i think what you really have to do i mean all kidding aside you, you do need a sort of a, a a nucleus support in your family uh, or whatever that family is that you have they they have to know what you're doing you there you yep. gotta for me and i think i said that word to you People used to say it to me, and I, I never really believed it. Now I, I do. You have to have a passion, right? I could go fly fishing every day, and I'd be happy. One of my clients sent me a, pic, a note the other day. He said, you are always so happy when you have a fish in your hand. And I was like, no, no, I'm happier when you have a fish in your hand. He goes, nope. Every time, you, your smile is always bigger. He's kind of right. I, I really do. I really do like. I like it. And that is what people buy. They buy you, you know, they, they buy an, at least in this, my little job, um, people buy an experience or an adventure with me or through me. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't be happier to share it. So, you know, find the passion and and don't lie to yourself for it. You You probably make sure you're true to yourself. There's a lot of, you brought up something interesting just a few moments ago about, uh, being proactive about cold calling and stuff like that. Do you know off the bat that was, were you good at that? Is that something that um, is necessary for your business? Can you give a little insight into that? I think it's, I think it's an important thing to touch upon. Yeah. Being cold proactive. You got to cold call. You don't know. You want it. You don't just want to know. You want to know the clients. <laughs> Can you repeat that? It looks like the screen broke up. Maybe yeah. you could just Sorry, we got a little over. distraction I think it's there. probably. Um, that's a, I'm going to try to get in the house and get some more. Or, mm-hmm. yeah, give me. I'm gonna I'm gonna move this into the house and plug you in yeah. so I get a little power because. But no, I think um, 
you got to be proactive. And I don't know, I, I apologize if I'm repeating myself. No, do it. Cause you it, need to know the clients you don't. Say it again. Yeah, hold on. Hang with me. <laughs> Here, we're live. No, we're still live. I we're said you need to. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> we're doing this live and we're getting power. So, um, but you need to, it's more, it's important to know the clients that you don't have, not the clients that you do. So okay. yes, you can create, you can create some, um, let me just get this plugged in because you're ready to drop, Nick. Nice. Now we get power. <laughs> okay. Where so, are we? Good signal. All right. Good Wi-Fi. Yeah. Now. Now we're back. Yeah. So cold calling. Um, the other day I had to do it. And there's a really uh, great location that I want to go fly fishing at. Um, and I have a number of clients who want to go, but I refuse to bring people to places that I haven't been. I, I need to do the due diligence, but that's kind of tough. You're calling up, in my case, right, in this business, you're calling a lodge saying, you got to believe in me, um, but I need you to bring me in free of charge so I can check it out if it's something that I think I want to bring my clients to. So I had to make that cold call. I had to call up the lodge and go to the marketing manager and say, hello, this is who I am. This is what I do. This is what I can offer. Uh, you need this. You want that. This is what I can deliver, but this is what I want. And that's hard to say. I mean, sometimes it's, you know, think about it. You, here's yeah. the number, call it. So, um, but on Wall Street in the early days, right, that's what we did. We were cold calling. We were shopping blocks of stock and you're just trying to get people in. So I'm not really, um, and I believe in myself. I have done this enough. I'm on year three with, you know, a bucket of successful trips behind me um, that I know I can make things, these things happen. So it's, uh, you know, I'm I'm really comfortable in, in making that um, in, in making that call. And it's the I bet at the beginning it wasn't always like that. I bet you were still sort of feeling filling the waters, right? Sort of fun, but yeah, at the beginning, yeah. did you sort of figure things out as you went and you know trust your gut here and there to understand what's what the best foot forward is? Um. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, but I found the best foot forward was the honest foot, and so in the beginning it was really hard to find not hard i mean i went to the people i knew and they knew me and they knew cynthia if you're involved with this you know they know i'm i'm pretty much a tough nut i'm not gonna uh, you know i i i have standards i have qualities and uh um you know i there's some things i won't do so, you know apps my absolute won't you know i know what i'll run back to the car to get mm -hmm. and i know what i'll leave in the car you know, right. so fishing, there's always something you're running back to. The, what will you run back to the car to get? What won't you run back to the car and get? And what will you always pack in your suitcase? And what don't you have? You can let it go. Don't have to pack. Yeah. So that's sort of where I'm at now is I'm very comfortable in um, that direction, that influence. I'm comfortable in knowing who my clients are, what, what, what's the profile of my client, although they're surprising me because I've, um, I'm just, you know, people are just wanting to come together for the adventure, you know, mm -hmm. as opposed to because they fit a mold. It's, it's more for the adventure. Interesting. So I want to dive now into your four, we mentioned a lot of these, but sort of in quick succession, you yeah. talked about, earlier today, we talked about passion, Mm -hmm. And your moral compass. Oh yeah, your moral and compass. Rules and good begets good. Can we just kind of give me like the sound bites, like yeah, something hearing so passion. And these are sort of the pillars of where you are now in your business and why things are becoming more successful as you go forward. Right. Um, well, passion just speaks for itself. We we yeah. spoke a lot about that. The moral compass is you really need to you need to be honest to yourself and honest about what the fishing is going to deliver, <laughs> you 
you, you just have to be on it. You have to be trustworthy. You need to respect people's time. So if you say I'm going to be there at 7 a.m., you're not, you're there at, I'm usually there at 6.15, checking my gear, making sure I'm well fed and hydrated and I'm ready because it's 7 a.m. It's your time. So it's, you know, that moral compass is just really full of self-respect and also respecting you. Mm -hmm. That's that's uh, what I meant by that moral compass, yeah. being honest and trustworthy. Makes a lot of sense. In the old days on Wall Street, prior to, in the 80s, right, in the 90s, before the internet, you're too young to remember it, Nick, but there was a day when the internet wasn't, and there was a Rolodex. I remember, I remember that day when you got it. Yeah, I, um, yeah. So the Rolodex was how you called your clients. And Wall Street runs because of a gentleman's handshake. And it means you're the buyer, I'm the seller. You're going to call me up and say, I need a block of Exxon, 100,000 shares. Those are, in those days, it had to happen like that. And I would write the ticket. You never. I, I got the phone to Wolf of Wall Street. Okay. Mm -hmm. You never gave me a check, right? When did you give me a check? On the institutional desk. This is like Fidelity calling Merrill Lynch. You never gave me a check. We just assume this is gentleman call. This is going to happen. There was a number. And if the number didn't match, it was a, a DK or I don't know. But 99.9% .9 of the trades went through because it was that acknowledgement, that, that honesty. Wow. And if you were dishonest, guess what? You didn't make it on the street. I was on the street for 25 years. I was an honest, <laughs> yeah, I was an right. honest engine. I was an honest trader. Many, 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 many honest traders. But, um, that helped me really embrace the idea of having a moral compass. So that's Excellent. what I meant with that. Man. Yeah. Good insight. I'm just, I'm envisioning, you know, all of that. Just thinking about all these people on the phone, you, you, all, the money and the trades going by and you're just saying, I trust it, you know, before the check comes in. Right. If I'm getting that. There's no, money, there's no check. I mean, in those days it was a trader to a trader over the phone. Wow. That's amazing. But, also why there were trading commissions that were higher in the 80s than they are today. How many, how much you pay for commission on a trade today? Zero, in many cases. And they make it on the margins, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, no, it's just there's no paper. In the old days, you were paying uh, whatever, like $45, $35, $65, because there was so much paper involved. Um, so nobody wanted to, one, mess up a trade because you'd have a double charge. So you made sure that you know, you were, you did what you were going to do and you did it and you did it with care and, you know, you, you just, so that's, that's what I meant by that moral compass. Was, yeah, that's really important. Yeah. And the next one is know the rules. What, can you dive into that a little bit? Yeah. You just got to know the rules. I mean, you got to know what, well, that's why I watch casting videos every night, you know, not, okay. well, not every night, but as often as I can. I mean, the rules are always, there's, there's, so much wonderful technology and so many smart people and, and conservation that's, you know, studying our, our waters and our rivers and our oceans and that you, you need to, I, I feel that I become a better business person when I learn more and not just settle for what I know. There's always something more to learn. So before you can, and sometimes everyone's like, yeah, I'm a rule breaker. I'm, you know, I'm doing things differently. It'll be, and that's what I meant when I said that to you. I, I can't break the rules till I know the rules. Mm -hmm. The rules are constantly changing. So you change, you know, you learn the rules every, every day, every week, every month. Try to learn one new rule a month. And if you get one a month, try to learn one, two new rules a month. Then maybe one new, you know, however, whatever your profession or your passion is, just learn it. And I'm guessing an element of or a foundational approach to this is perseverance. Mm -hmm. Staying yeah. with. Yeah, I. You got to persevere. People will beat you down. You got to just put on your blinders and focus on, you know, on that inner strength that you have or that inner passion that you have, and and you know, don't let all that noise get to you. Sometimes. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. And then the last one you mentioned was good begets good. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, good to get's good. Um, What's the story about? How does that work for you and your business, and how does that help? Well, uh, you know, I I go the extra mile. I'm always, you know, if I if I'm packing up in the morning and I put in a granola, I never put one granola. I know sounds silly. I never put in one granola bar. I put in two. I never buy two flies. I buy four. You know, I I never say I caught a great fish till I tell you you've caught better fish. Mm. It's just celebrating the people around you because when if I don't ask about you, Nick, I, I become self. So this is a difficult conversation for me tonight because for the last 41 minutes, you're asking me questions about me. There's so much more I want to learn about you, you know, so it's by me and you, right, you we work together. And as soon as we start working together, we have a bond. And once you have that bond with people, um, you know, that leads to like commitment and more respect and, and people want to share their great time they had with this person who made you feel good. And I don't want to say it like that because it makes it sound like maybe I just want to make people feel good. No, I, I just genuinely, I'm that person, you know. Yeah, just, I get that. Yeah. So, yeah. and there's a lot more to a business transaction than just the transaction, right? There's a lot more behind it. Yeah. No, absolutely. You yeah. have. Um, I used to always say, it's okay if you just want to learn fly fishing because you want that beautiful picture <laughs> Christmas with your son or your daughter, or your wife or your partner or whoever it is. That's, yeah. and it's also okay because you want to catch the biggest trout than anybody else caught i mean that's okay too yeah but you but in order for me to know that i have to know more about you so you know it's you have to kind of you have to kind of talk to people and good begets good that's what i meant by that. that's great i know i just have a, a couple more questions and uh yeah this has been amazing so far and really appreciate your insights uh a great question i would like to know is what are some of the what would what would you tell someone just starting off their business? I know we kind of touched upon this before, but if someone were to just take that first step, what what is something that you could impart to them that would help them along their way? If they're thinking about a business or if they're thinking about growing their business, mm -hmm. taking it to the next level, what is something? Um, be organized. Okay. Be organized. Um, learn technology because you are the IT department. You are the marketing department. You are are you are sales you're the it all stops with you um and and know that even though you know your business may be baking because you have a passion for baking or golfing because you have a passion for golfing that it's not about you golfing or you baking it's about your client baking and your client golfing and your client fishing hmm. But you're doing it so you can surround yourself with all this more, the world of baking and the world of golfing and the you know so you know it's it's you know understand that you're in a service business and you're serving your your client if you go into golfing, baking, or fishing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to put that. That's a good way to put that. Hope that makes sense. But that makes a lot of sense. And so. What's the future of fearless fly fishing? I know I looked at your website. You have you. I think you're kind of understating how successful your business is because you're all over the place. Like I saw pictures of you in Belize with people, Canada. You have something coming up in Canada, Montana. Canada. It's, Canada. This is not just a starting incubation type. But this has been. This is in the past three years. You've taken this from one place to another considerably. In, so the hard thing I have right now is saying, unfortunately, no to projects. Um, and that's because I, I, I really have to, every November I shut down the, I mean, although this November I'm not shutting down fishing, I have stuff going on in November. So every like December, January, February, I kind of shut it down and plan my, uh, my next year. And all year long, I, I kind of think, what do I want to repeat the following year? Hmm. Um, and that's because every, your clients have busy schedules. So maybe, you know, where you're going to be in three months or in six months, but the only way you can be there with me is if I already have it planned as an offering. So I, I, I need to be organized. Um, so where I see this going in another, um, 
three to five years is I'm really happy with the way I have the business laid out in terms of 40, 40, 20. Um, and I'm going to try to stick to that. I just hope it doesn't, you know, I hope I can, I hope I can stick to it. It's just because I'm being pulled in a lot of different areas. Um, I would like to, I have some really smart, young people who want to be part of this mm -hmm. I, I i don't have enough business to support <laughs> an employee <laughs> but uh, i do have i did have an intern this year and i know i'm going to have another intern next year so i think internships is part of it people yep. come in and get involved so I don't makes know. a lot of sense makes oh. a lot of sense okay. we, had a, we, had, we have a comment that popped up on the screen here just a, a little while ago i didn't see it and uh, it's funny. It says there's a wall. I'll put it on the screen if I can show it. There's a Wall Street in Boston. I did not know that. No. Oh, <laughs> there is actually the Boston Stock Exchange is incredibly active, um, and you get involved in Wall Street from any con any month any uh, state. And Boston was, I mean, you know, Fidelity. You're you're yeah. on the show. and yeah, yeah. So yes, there uh, is. He's being cheeky. I think I, I know Owen. He's fine. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, the, yeah, just finally now, uh, where can people find you? How can they, you know, take you up on an excursion? Um, I know you have a wicked busy schedule and stuff like that, but um, where's the best place? The best place is uh, Fearless Fly Fishing. And on that website, you can reach out to me either by my email mm -hmm. or by my phone number. And also on Instagram, direct messaging, wicked uh, easy. Um, people, a lot of people reach out to me on Instagram. Yeah. I don't know if you had a chance to see my, uh, gram site, but it's pretty pumped up with a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. You have some great engagement over there. And, and uh, yeah, thank you. And then also within, um, Facebook, I also use Facebook. I'm not as active on Facebook as I, I should be. I just find that the fly fishing community is really, um, kind of, at least the people that have, have helped me be successful are, are really hanging out on Instagram. Yeah. So, very good. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, this has been awesome. I think we'll leave it there. And uh, I know I've learned a lot and I think the people watching this and seeing the replay and from here on out are going to get a lot from this. And uh, thank you so much for your time. I know you have a huge busy schedule and I really appreciate you taking the time to say, you know, last minute just to jump on doing this in front of yeah. everyone. So, Oh, it awesome. must, Nick, you just seem, you yeah. said, really impressed what your technology and your knowledge of social media and even having such a smart yeah. uh, such a smart sort of platform to put this all out there so it's yeah. really shit yeah absolutely thank you so much and next time you're back in town i'd love to catch up with you and maybe we'll do this again yeah, I, yeah. I, and here's I, some more of how you're going backyard you don't even know it i, I got <laughs> the longest running backyard fire in canton so <laughs> <laughs> that's right I have a feeling now everyone knows. <laughs> you and I are going to be at that fire, backyard fire pit. <laughs> Fantastic. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. We'll leave it there. And thank you to everyone that's watching and watching the replay. This has been another great one. Uh, thanks so much. We'll see you guys again. Bye.